top, yeah. Just kind of angle it. it. Takes very little force, doesn't it? Somebody on the other side. On the other side. There you go. All right, bring it back to you. Take it out. There you go. And just stick it in here and just run around this way. Extra stuff. Yeah, there you go. You go. Yep. So you don't even need that hand on it. Two fingers walking around. Nice curve on it. There you go. Keep on. There you go. Now you can hand it right over to him. Don't even pull it out. And he can he can walk it towards himself. There you go. Now what you want to do is bring your hand in here and hold that windshield up so it, so it doesn't fall in towards your patient. There you go. Your hand up underneath it like that. Watch your fingers. There you go. Now is that easier than using an axe? Much. All right. Very good. All right. Next, we're going to take this door off. Anybody got a center punch? All right. Good job. Bet you I can beat you to it. All right. Very good. Let's try to push all the glass into the car today, just because it's a training ground out here. All right, so we have two options. We can attack this door by getting a purchase point here, or we can use our spreaders and come about three quarters of the way back to the A-post and do a spread here. About half the time, this door will pop open by itself without even, even uh, spreading the door from here, okay? All right, now let's put the extender reach tips on. Quick change out, very, very quick, easy to do. All right. Let's go ahead and set the tool here, that way you're not fighting it. There you go. And you want to put this little notch and this notch here, here, and here. There you go. Let's, let's, come, back a, let's come back just a hair. There you go, right about there. All right, now, you're not, now don't fight the tool at all. The tool is pinned by itself. You're not sitting there fighting it and using your body weight. You're letting the tool do the work itself, okay? And also, watch the speed of the tool. This is what the four stage pump does. All right. All right, so as soon as we start tearing sheet metal, we want to stop. Once you start tearing it, game over. You're not going to get any more force out of it, all right? Now, you, do you have a pretty good purchase point? Is that a little bit more than using a Halligan in it? You've got a huge purchase point here. So now you can we can switch the tips out. Stand it up on the end, on the aluminum on the back. There you go. Again, all no no plastic, all aluminum. Easy switch out. How you're back. Now, I didn't also show you can also put one on each end. Doesn't matter. You can use one of these reverse, sideways, whatever. Um, you can use them any way you want to. Except one side, if you need only 36 inch, if you need 40, you can put all 40 on. Right. So now Steve's gonna put those on top of the car so we, everybody knows where they're at. If you leave them in the ground, things get kicked around, you'll lose them. Okay, I always try to put them back on the car or on the hood, that way we know where they're at. Or right. if, you got, if you got a white hat, Steve's walking around, hand it to him, just put it in his pocket. Right. right now the white hat has the tool. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, so he's gonna close the tool back up like we talked about before he even picks it up. Now he's ready to spread versus holding on to it while he's doing that, okay? So we're gonna pick the tool up and set it straight down on top of this and let the tool wait. All right, now drop it back in there again, good. All right, so you see him slam the tool in there? How much, how much more force do you think he got by going, uh? Nothing, right? So slamming the tool never helps. When people are trying to get it into a hinge and they slam it, it does nothing, all right? Set it in there where you want it and then move the tool and then, then turn your tool on, okay? So let's turn it just a hair that way. What do you think about that? Now we're, those tips are as close to that hinge as you can possibly get, all right?
Look good? All right, somebody grab the cutters. You want to pop it with the with the spreader? All right, watch yourself on it. Okay. All right, Steve wants to use the spreaders on popping yeah, the door. So. Hey, you want to grab the door on the top there so we keep it from him? Right, I like up. taking the bottom hinge first. Reason being the door is going to lift up and still be held on by that hinge. Then you do the top hinge, it's going to pivot the door down and, and less apt to hit somebody. Twist it all the way open. Yep, you're doing good. It's moving. All right, stop and get another bite. See, as soon as you start to tear that sheet metal, you know you need to get another bite. There you go. You got the handle turned all the way. All right, and that's why we do the bottom hinge first. That was violent. If that hinge would have been popped at the top, that door would have flown 10 feet and hurt somebody, okay? To pull that out, cut my plug, I think. All right, Steve's gonna do a cut right here with the Sawzall just to show you the beam. There's a transverse beam that runs from here to there on every single one of these vehicles, all right? Without cutting it with the Sawzall, we could use those spreaders and the extended reach tips right here. We're gonna make about a 45 from here underneath this dash. And with your imagination, you know where it's at. He's gonna cut it and show you where it's at today that we have a good idea. But you can blindly spread into this dash and you'll more than likely hit it if you have the correct angle. Once we hit that transverse bar, this steering wheel should be sitting around this area. So the days of hook, hooking up chains to the front bumper and, and pulling that together, or putting your stair chocks here and using a ram, and now you've got a ram in front of your patient. How are you gonna get your patient out over that ram? Okay, with these uh, extended reach tips and the spreader, when we spread from here to here, it's gonna open this up, and now you have all of this room to get in to get, pull your patient out in this direction. Or if you need to fold this down, you have even more room by leaving the tool in place. So Steve's gonna cut the dash to show y'all the transverse bar across that. Because I know what we're doing next, I'm gonna go ahead and change the tips out so I'm ready to go when he's ready. Now I want y'all to look under the, there and everybody see that transverse bar, okay? See that metal bar that's going this direction? That's what we're aiming for with this. All right, so even without cutting that piece out, I know in my mind about where it is. And if you miss it, you can always re retract it and go back in and hit it, okay? So I went ahead and put my extended reach tips on there knowing what the next step was going to be. Sir? Okay. All right. See how it was slipping off that plastic? So all I did was just push that plastic up out of the way so I can get another, another bite up underneath it, okay? I'm gonna take it through real quick on this. Just tell you, what are you concerned about the patient? How much room you got to work with the patient? Plenty. You're not using a ram doing a dash lift or nothing. So it allows you to get to the patient, okay? How much room you got to get the legs out? Quite a bit. You know, when you buy a car, you get into it real comfortable. So that's only, that's neutral position. This was in neutral position. If it's down on it, how many inches you really need? 
it seems like when you go do demos, everybody wants that dash to come out the front window. You're normally not going to do that. You're going to take enough room to get the victim out, okay? So you see how quick that was? Never even picked up the cutter. Never. I'm not a big hinge cutter for, for, for cutters. Not a big because you got a wide spreader tip. Let's blow it. you got the spreader there. That's one tool. But the cutters will do it. It's a very powerful cutter. It's not a problem. Either. But I stay away from that. And plus what we did, no cribbing at all. We hardly even hurt that rocker panel. Hardly even touched it. Uh, when you look at it with this car, this is a tough steel. We're going to see how, how it fractures. And we'll talk about I got a piece of it I'll show you. Uh, with this, you didn't lose the structure by cutting this and cutting this, making a hinge. If you cut the bottom A, cut the frame, do all those five, six cuts, your car is going to come right back down on you. Now, when Robert lets this down, it's not coming down very far at all, especially a standard transfer beam, not a magnesium. It'll bend it. It'll stay up. You almost have to stand on it to get it down. Any questions, I'll get out of it, Robert. And there's plenty of room for me, for you to pull a 300 pound or whatever from this position out, right? And the tool's not even in the way. So if you needed to use this tool again, you could pull it. Like you said, this is only going to come down maybe an inch or two, and you can go around and start popping doors other places if you need to. Okay. So let's see how far it comes back down. Is that an inch or two? Now we can do the same thing on the other side, and that transverse bar runs from A post to A post, right? So we can do the exact same thing, you're just not gonna see the dramatic, the, the steering wheel coming out the top, okay? So now it's y'all's turn to play. Y'all ready? 